Okay guys, welcome to a brand new feature. This is called Compilation Teardown. And the idea behind this is to basically take a look at compilation tapes. Um, if you're a, you know, an 8-bit or 16-bit owner back in the day, you'll have been aware of what these were. This was basically, it was a collection of games that a company had previously sold as individual titles that were no longer making any money. So what they would do is they would pull together, you know, half a dozen, uh, sometimes you got more, sometimes less, um, a number of games, and they would sell them for, you know, basically the price of what one of them would have cost six months earlier. Some of these compilations were really good, some of them not quite so good. Um, there was always one or two strong titles and one or two not quite so good titles. So I'm not really aware of any other channel that looks at these, um, so I thought why don't I have a look at it myself, it's something that you know, we probably all bought back in the day. So to kick things off, I'm taking a look at Soft Aid. This was a collection of games that I believe was published by Quicksilver back in, I think it was towards the end of 1985. Now, you had Band-Aid, which was the Bob Geldof single to raise money for the famine in Ethiopia, and then obviously in, later on in 1986, I think it was, summer 86, you had Live-Aid. Now this was the software industry's attempt to basically try and help the charity. Um, so they called it Soft-Aid, and there was basically 10 games it was released for the C64 and also for the Spectrum. I don't know why they didn't release it for Amstrad. Um, so I'm going to take a look at both compilations for, for, I say it's for the C64 and the, Am not the Amstrad and the, the Spectrum. It was one that I did buy back in the day. So let's take a look at the games. Right, kicking things off is Spellbound. And this is by Beyond Software. And this is on the ZX Spectrum. Uh, you can see there, it's basically, it's a, it's a Kubert clone. Now, Kubert is one fiendishly difficult game. Um, never played the arcade version, um, but I would imagine that the joystick would be positioned in such a way that the diagnosis is easy. And I've always found playing any version of Kubert on a home system very difficult. But I've got to say, this actually handles fairly well. Nice use of colour. Don't think this ever got a port to the C64. So the idea behind the game is basically you've got to change each, I was going to say square. Well, I suppose it is square, it's a kind of isometric sort of look to it. You've basically got to try and change each colour uh, to the same colour and then you progress on to level 2 like I've just done here. So overall, it's a nice little playable number. Now most of these games, um, although this compilation came out in 1985, most of these games were quite old at the time, which I suppose from a, a publisher's point of view you can kind of understand that. Right, next game on the Spectrum 1 is Starbike by The Edge. I think that was before he became the, the lead guitarist uh, with U2. Is there no end to his uh, talents? <laughs> right, let's see, yep. Uh, he came soon. Right, okay, right, let's go. I think this got a release in the C64, I don't remember exactly. Ah, we have sound. Ah, balls, right, it looks like it's not controlling, so I'm going to have to use the keys. Right, so it kind of, it sounds like Jetpack, but it kind of plays probably a bit more like Defender, possibly. Right, 
I am always absolutely pants on keys though, that's an unfortunate thing. Being a C64 man, I was always uh, used to joysticks. <laughs> <laughs> right, anyway, that is Starbike by The Edge. Next one on the spectrum is Cockatini Wolf. And this was published by Elite. This was one of their earliest games. Don't touch the plants. Top tip. Right, I think I've got the control to the left and right, and how do you move up? How do you move up? Oh, oh, ah, there we go. Right, so it's, I was going to say it's like uh, joust, it's not really, you don't have to keep pressing the fire button, you just hold it and then you'll basically keep flying. Take your finger off the fire button and you sort of descend. Oh, oh, that was lucky. So the idea of this game is basically to collect the little stars at the top. I'm not quite sure why these dinosaurs are uh, spewing up rulers. I mean, graphics are very, very basic, but I do remember playing this in the C64 and I'm actually quite enjoying it. Damn it. And why that looks like a snake with a pineapple on its back when it's moving down. <laughs> now, I think Cocatini Wolf is actually something from a. Uh, is it from. what do you call it? From history. Is it Greek mythology, possibly? I can't remember exactly. I'm sure it is a thing. So you can see there, yeah, the graphics are really, really basic, but it's still a nice little game. It's actually really playable when you pick up the wee star thing. Ah, I've just noticed here, time, it says BC, so I'm wondering. So you must move through time. See, that was obviously pants at the C64, because I don't remember actually ever seeing any other levels on it. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't, don't know. But that's a nice little game, that's Cockatini Wolf. Right, next on the spectrum is The Pyramid by Fantasy Software. This starred this little guy called Ziggy, I believe. See, I love these little sound effects. See that sound effect when you shoot stuff? <laughs> That is quintessentially Spectrum 48k. Lovely little noise. Back then, that was about the only noise that people thought the, the Spectrum could actually make, and it was only later on when people started to get to grips with the sound chip. Well, it didn't have a sound chip, but they started to get to grips, they were able to make even the Spectrum 48k sing. But that was a lovely little sound, it really was. So yeah, the idea behind this game is basically shoot uh, dustbins and I think they eventually disappear. I can't remember. Yeah, I think you've got to hit so many. Ah, there we go, right, there's a little exit opened up. Right, you're about to enter chamber number two. Yes, yeah, so I think you have to kill so many or destroy so many of these little things and then you move on. It's, it's pretty basic gameplay, you know, there's not really a lot to do other than moving about and shooting stuff. I don't think they even shoot at you at any point. Maybe they do later on, I'm not quite sure. That is fairly simplistic, but you know, it all looks really nice and, you know, it plays, plays pretty good as well. Doesn't really give any indication of how many you've got to shoot. Not that I can see anyway. I 
Yeah, that's the pyramid by Fantasy Sophia. Right, I better be careful with this game because we all know what happens when you feature Horus in any video. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is uh, Horus Goes Skiing. This was one of these games that it was basically the game that every shop in the UK used to display in the window. They always had this game running. I think part of the reason was because it had a demo mode, whereas a lot of games never had demo modes. Now I'm using keys here because I don't think you can, I don't think it's supported joystick. And as I've said, I am absolutely rubbish with keys. Well hey! <laughs> Now for an early, early game, this is actually, again, it's pretty playable. I mean, you see, this compilation, it redeemed at £4.99, which, you know, back in 1985 wasn't a lot of money. You know, in fact, five quid for ten games wasn't, wasn't bad value at all. The fact that it was going to charity as well was always uh, a nice little bonus. Hey! Ah, right, okay, you actually start, that's handy, you start on this side of the road, which is, makes it half as easy, or half as difficult, is it? <laughs> ah, there we go, is that game over, I think it might be, oh, one last life, I think. And it's curtains. Yeah, that's Horace Goes Skiing. That's a, a classic Spectrum game. Sorry, no money, no ski. Right, next on the Spectrum is Gilligan's Gold. This was published by Ocean Software. Now, this was a... Uh, what's it called again? Oh, it's based on an arcade game, uh, which completely and utterly escapes me. I'll remember it at some point. I'm not quite sure what's going on with the, the graphics, the, the sprites look like big blobs of colour. Now this is a fiendish game, it really is. Fiendishly hard, I should say. What's it called? What's the name of the game? I can't remember. It will come to me, hopefully at some point. But anyway, it's based on that game. That game, what? I can't remember. I guess we'll need to have another shot. Oh, where do we start? There we go. And it would be nice if you could actually turn that music off. Though the thing is, if this was on the spectrum, it wouldn't be very loud. Uh, whereas when you're playing it in an emulator, uh, obviously you're getting the sound through the speakers. What's that called? That is Gwony. I can hear you all shouting at me as you're watching this video what the name of this game is. <laughs> That's going to annoy me. Now you're supposed to be able to push the little truck, which I can't see me do. Ah, balls. Anyway, that is really, really difficult. That was Gilligan's Gold. Right, next one is Ant Attack. And this is by Sandy White, or it was published by Quicksilver Program by fellow Scotsman Sandy White. Now this did get a release in the C64, but I never, I never actually knew about it back in the day. 
Now, apparently this was one of the first games that actually gave you a choice to choose either. You could either play as a guy or a bird. Uh, the first level is fairly simple. Now again, this is using keys, and I did play this just for a couple of minutes because I knew I'd make a complete ass of it. I didn't. So there we go. I've rescued uh, my darling girlfriend. I am um, should just be able to jump over there and escape. There we go. Nice and easy to begin with. Now the sequel to this game uh, is Zombie Zombie. I was talking to Dave about it on our collab video on Christmas Eve. It's a wonderful game. That was basically the sequel to this game. It uses the same graphics, but this time you're attacked by zombies and it's definitely worth checking out. Right, so let's just go for a wonder. I've got no idea what I'm, where I'm going. There's not any map or anything at all. I don't know whether I... Oh, 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 there we go. There she's there. <laughs> I was a bit lucky. Right, now she'll now follow me, so let's just run as quick as we can. Quick. Now, I don't think the ants can jump. Hopefully we're going the right way. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Ah, balls. <laughs> we're getting chased. Now you can throw grenades. Oh, there we go. Ouch. Hey, excellent. I think that's the first time I've ever done level two. So anyway, that's an attack. That is by Quicksilver. Next up, by real-time software, is 3D Tank Duo, which, as you can see, is it's basically Battlezone. This was basically when software companies could just release their own version of an arcade game and nobody really gave a hoot. And the Golden Gate Bridge there in the background, possibly? Now the Spectrum was always pretty good at doing vector graphics. I was never really a fan of Battlezone, never really got to play the arcade one enough. I think if I'd played it with the proper uh, controls I might have enjoyed it because it basically had two joysticks and to move forward you push both sticks forward. To move right you would pull back on the left and push, no sorry, to move right you would pull down on the right and push up on the left and then vice versa. But it's really one of these games that you've got to play, the, got to play it with the proper, proper controls. Playing it in main just doesn't really cut it. You've got the wee radar at the top there, you can see the enemy's just in the top left about to come into view any second now. There we go. He's kind of hiding behind that pyramid thing. volcano in the background. So yeah, that's 3D Tank Duo by Real Time Software. Next one is Jack and the Beanstalk by Thor. Alright, so you play the part, oh bugger, you play the part of Jack, I presume you're trying to climb the Beanstalk, I'm, I'm guessing that's the giant's uh, castle at the top left there. So try and not fall off. Let's avoid the wee birds. Ah, come on! No way! Right, let's go again. We can jump, apparently. <laughs> My goodness, it is so sensitive. 
no wonder that sun is scoffing me, laughing at me, at my pathetic gaming skills. <laughs> oh dear, I jumped and died. Deary me, I couldn't see me playing this for very long. And you know what this game reminds me of? It reminds me of one of these things, you know, you've got the wire and you've got to try and, you've got, you control a little hoop and you've got to try and not touch the wire and get it from one side to the other without touching it. And if it does, it beeps and it's game over. That's what this game reminds me of. It's stupidly difficult. And it moves so quick. The slightest wee movement, it just moves off to the side, so yeah, that's not a particularly good game, it's a bit difficult. That was Jack and the Beanstalk. Right, next up is a game I always associate with Amstrad, this is Sorcery. And this was by Virgin Software. I say I associate this with Amstrad, I think because I always remember it was one of the earliest Amstrad games to come out, and it was really, really impressive looking. I mean, looking at it now, it's, it's pretty basic. And you've got a club. And I'm almost dead, doing it 6%. Two percent. <laughs> You've been killed by the necromancer. Right, pressing fire button doesn't seem to do anything. It would certainly help if you had a weapon. I mean, nice wee graphics. But yeah, it's, it's a simple little game. But then you look back at most 8 bit games and most of them were pretty simple because I mean they had to be because look at the look at the memory constraints they were working with and and I was playing what was I doing? I was uh, yeah, I'd I'd recorded a video of my girlfriend playing Manic Minor and posted it on Facebook and I was basically seeing how difficult these games were and somebody commented, I think it was uh, Steve, I mean Steve commented well they had to be difficult because they were so short games and it's true you know if games were easy then you would have completed it in 10 minutes so games had to be difficult yeah anyway that's sorcery not one of the better games Right, that was the Spectrum compilation. This is the first game on the C64. This is Gumshoe by ENF Software, who I believe made Chucky Egg, I think. Now, I did buy this compilation, and I did actually buy it. I wouldn't stoop that low to copy it. I did buy it. And I played quite a lot. This, this compilation actually uh, introduced me to quite a few games. The one game that I always thought was on this but it's not. And that was Beam Rider. I always thought Beam Rider was on this this compilation, and it isn't. I would have bet my mortgage that Beam Rider was on it. In fact, I was talking to Lacoser, and I think he himself said that Beam Rider was on it, but as you could see by the advert earlier on, it quite clearly wasn't. That's quite a lot of uh, data for a shoot em up. <laughs> Current ballast. Not a bad wee game, quite blocky graphics, but it's playable nevertheless. I know it seems, seems to kind of pause a wee bit. I don't remember it doing that back in the day, though it was about 40 odd years ago that I played it. Yeah, see, there's a bit of pausing going on, I don't know why it does that. The sound effects are minimal. You've got the noise of the doors opening and you've got the shooting. There's not even any death noise either. 
So anyway, that was Gumshoe. Let's right, see, there we go. Yeah, Pitfall by Activision. I, I wonder, was that? If anybody else can remember, did they, anyone else think that Beam Rider was on this compilation? It obviously wasn't because you know the advert says it wasn't, unless they changed it or something. If anybody knows the answer, was Beam Rider ever on Soft Aid? Yeah, this is the original Pitfall by Activision. <laughs> hmm, it's all about the timing. Thing. Hey. You're on quite a strict time limit as well, so there's a lot of waiting about. This time maybe. Nah, bugger. I mean, I'm going to have to go for it now, I think. That's Pitfall, and that was by Activision Software. Now, this next one's Star Trader, or Start Radar, depending on how you actually. Ah, and you see, on the title, it didn't have a space. Not to worry. This is kind of. I'm not going to say. I'm not going to call it Elite. It's kind of like a, a budget version of Elite. You basically got to buy food and buy stuff. Now, me and my mate, we played this game to death. We actually sat up all night and played it. Anyway, hey, it's morning, you're outside the spaceport, you see signs to inside spaceport, farm, gunsmiths, etc, etc. Press key to go to place. Now, you see, Frontier had faces, so this game is actually ahead of uh, this. Must have inspired Elite 2 with the faces. <laughs> Actually, look quite similar. Yeah, it's a very, very basic game, but we were we became quite addicted to it. You got to eat in that as well. You got to go to the pub and buy stuff. Yeah, that's quite messy looking, that isn't it? Looks like a spectrum screenshot. Alright, leave the pub. Let's see if we can, how do we go into spaceport? Right, choose a destination planet. Oh, I don't know, let's just go for planet 3. Ah, now see that was quite impressive. Well, it was impressive, until it's froze. <laughs> right. <laughs> that one crashed. Right, okay, right, here's Cockatini Wolf by Elite, and this is the C64 one. Now, I can't think for the life of me why they've chosen Consider Yourself from the musical Oliver as a, the tune or the track for this game. Now, 
Now, there's a lot of inertia in this version of the game. This is harder than the Spectrum one. I don't remember this game being quite so difficult. Yeah, you can see the graphics are pretty, pretty awful as well in this version. There was something that was quite addictive about it though, I don't know why. I think any game that you have to collect stuff and it's like different screens, there's always a, you always want to see what the next screen looks like. Tricky. Wah! Damn it. Nah, bugger. Yeah, there's a lot of inertia going on there. So that's Cockatini Wolf. And here we go. Now anybody that is a regular to my live streams will know this game very, very, very well. I had never really played this game until I got this compilation. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, if you've never seen a live stream that I do, uh, I always finish every live stream playing this game because I once attempted this game as being wholly impossible. Even the first level I used to say was impossible. Now, through a lot of practice, I mean, I don't play this game outside the live stream, so that doesn't make any sense. But through playing it every live stream, um, we, when I say we, me and all the guys that watch the videos have managed to get to level 3. Um, it's been a it's been a collective effort <laughs> trying to figure out when to jump and when not to jump and when to pause etc. I can now usually do the first screen pretty much without any issues. But I was talking earlier there about how difficult games are. This is one of the most difficult video games you'll ever ever play. I just recently got past this, but I think it was in the last uh, live stream I managed to get on to level 3. I'm gradually... Now I think the secret along the left here is you have to pause. This bit's normally not too bad. I should be okay, right, so I can stay here. Now I need to wait, and then I think the secret is to pause when I get to a little purple bit. Pause, that's it. Oh, I keep, whoa, that was lucky. Right, just to navigate this little laser thing and then pick up the key and then we're, we're golden. Hey! Right, I've never ever got past this, uh, this level. I've only actually been on it, this is only the second time I've ever managed to get it. Now you'll see there it says Manic Minter. Now, Interceptor Software, the founder of Interceptor actually worked with Jeff Minter and then they basically had a fallout and the guy went and started his own business, Interceptor Micros, or Software. I think they were called Interceptor Micros at one point as well. Um, and they always used to have a dig at Jeff Minter. Don't know why, I think it was a bit of a Quite a nasty breakup, I think it was. Now, um, is that supposed to be Jeff Minter in the middle? I'm not quite sure. That ah, balls. Right, 
But if you've never played this game and you want to experience a slice of 80s uh, gaming play at its very most difficult, then I suggest you give this, this game a go. Ah, damn it. One more life. <laughs> right, that's China Miner, that's a fantastic game, I love it now. Right, we've seen Gilligan's Gold on the Spectrum, this is on the C64. And I'm still trying to remain... Ah, wow, what's it called again? Bagman, a Bagman, that's the name of it. That was the arcade game. Then I think you had Super Bagman as well. It's so difficult though. I like the graphics in this one and the music's nice as well actually. Kill the wee guys if you've got the big axe. So I think it only stuns them. You can see them cowering in the corner there. Now I think the idea of the game is you've got to put the gold. I've never actually completed a level in this game ever, so I think you have to put the bags into the wheelbarrow and then you've got to wheel the barrow along to the side. Like you can see them try to run away from me. Let's come here, you. Ah, bugger, right, I'm assuming you can only kill them once. You can only kill one guy with one axe. <laughs> they both just killed themselves there. Alright, they didn't. They're just dazed. Come on! The gold go just vanish in the thin air. Now you yeah, walk slower when you've got the bag, so you need to bear that in mind. I just can't get the hang of that at all. Ah, damn it. Boof. Yeah, that's a nice little game, even if it is impossible to play. That's Gilligan's Gold. Right, next one. This is a game, again, I always associate with the Spectrum. This is Fred. This is Expanded Sprite Central. Nice big graphics so The scrolling, I always remember the, the fact that the scrolling was slightly jerky it used to annoy me a wee bit. Yeah, I know it's underneath, oh, it says life. Mm. Ah, but I mean, I've just noticed. It says B and C, so you have bombs and you've also got a gun as well. Oh yeah, of course you've got a gun. Because you can see it. Right, you need to avoid the, 
the acid or whatever that is that's dripping from the ceiling. Whoa! When I look at all these games that I remember from the past, I realise just how few games I actually ever completed. <laughs> I might have been into video games for a long time, but I'm by far away not a good gamer. I always think that little sprite Fred is actually quite a cute looking little wee guy. You could have quite easily used him for other games, but I don't think they ever came out in anything else. So that's Fred, that was by Quicksilver. Next one is Gyropod by Taskset. Now, anyone again that watches my channel on a regular basis will know that Super Pipeline and Super Pipeline 2, both by Taskset, are two of my favourite video games um, ever. They're just fantastic games, and they were made by Taskset. I wasn't really familiar with Gyropod, in fact the first time I actually played this would be oh, maybe a couple of years ago when I was doing a... making a video. It's... it's pretty much a... it's a basic shoot 'em up You basically scroll around the perimeter of that space station thing, shooting, but you'll notice there you have got a laser. And you have to be careful you don't run out of... Uh, your laser doesn't overheat. Kinda of reminds me a wee bit like Gyrus. Pretty basic Wii game. I mean, it, it looks nice. It's certainly nicely presented. But I think you'd get bored of it pretty quick. Although bonus points for a little, uh, little glowing starfield. Music is getting quicker. Oh, hey! <laughs> and more of the same. Yeah, it's Gyropod by Taskset. Next up is one of the first games I ever played the C64. This is Falcon Patrol. And it was released by Virgin. There was a sequel that followed called uh, Imaginatively Falcon Patrol 2. I always thought the sound in this game was really, really impressive. You can tell it's an early game because look at the scrolling. You know, if that had been made probably a couple of years later, um, it would have had nice smooth scrolling. What's interesting is I've seen a few of these old games and basically somebody has gone in and uh, tweaked it. The game that I'm thinking of is uh, Scramble by Anarog. That had really bad scrolling but it was actually a good game and somebody went in and basically tweaked the graphics, uh, tweaked the, the, the scrolling and turned it into an even better version. So if anybody's watching this and would like to do the same to Falcon Patrol, make that scrolling nice and smooth, I would be very, very, very grateful. Radar at the bottom there. See the two planes coming towards you. Oof. Ha! 
have it. Ooh, that was close. And the last game, this is a game that you never really hear getting much love at all. Uh, this is Flack. Now, Troy Linden, he worked on, uh, I'm sure he worked on Summer Games. Or am I thinking of someone else? But he also worked on Barry McGuigan's Boxing. Now, this is, this was kind of an Xavius clone. I don't think you could fire up the way. I don't think there was any sprites that came towards you. But it was, uh, yeah, you could see there, you know, uh, shared graphics with Xavius, and I think it's safe to say that this, uh, that Xavius inspired this game. It was the idea behind this. But you never really hear people talking about this game. It was a very, very early game. And the last life. Yeah, looking at it now, it's it's pretty basic stuff. But back in the day, I thought it was excellent. So anyway, guys, there we have it. That is the last uh, the last game we're going to look at. So that was ten games, both on the Spectrum and on the uh, and on the C sixty four. So yeah, I mean, looking at the Spectrum compilation with Spellbound, uh, Starbike, Spellbound's it's not a bad little game. Starbike, it's kind of like a Defender type clone. Cockatini Wolf, probably that was a better version of the Spectrum one. The Pyramid is very basic, quite good fun. Horoscope Skiing, well, it's Horoscope Skiing, you can't beat that. Gilligan's Gold was pretty difficult. Uh, Ant Attack is an absolute stonewall classic. Jack and the Beanstalk, um, wasn't a fan of that. Too difficult. And Sorcery, <coughs> excuse me. Sorcery wasn't bad, though I think I prefer the Amstrad one. Um, C64, Gumshoe, kind of a, I can't remember what the name of it's called again, Elevator Action Clone. Pitfall, it's a classic. Star Trader, if it hadn't crashed, I did play that quite a lot. Um, yeah, Cocatini Wolf wasn't overly keen on that in the C64. China Miner, great game. That's worth four ninety nine of anyone's money. Gilligan's Gold again was a good game. Fred, quite a basic game, basic graphics, um, but quite good fun. Gyro Pod again, very very basic. Falcon Patrol, a nice little game uh, by Virgin, and finally Flack. So, mm, to rate, uh, should I rate them? Yeah, out of 10 for the Spectrum. I'm going to go for, I think, 6.5 out of 10. And on the, on the Commodore 64, you've only really got Falcon Patrol, Flack and China Mine, and maybe Pitfall, I'm going to go for 5.5, I think. Uh, but you need to remember, it was only £4.99. Uh, and it was also, uh, it was also, you know, it was for charity as well. So, yeah, that is soft aid. So, anyway, guys, if there's a particular compilation you'd like to see me feature in this feature, please just put your comments down below. I do hope you enjoyed watching this video. And as always, guys, thank you very, very, very much for watching.